this day this worship service we ask that you glorify yourself show us mercy and bless us in Jesus precious name you are welcome you may be seated last Sunday I spoke to us on spiritual maturity when a man is not mature spiritually such a person can do anything can go to anywhere can behave anyhow but maturity shows that you've grown you can do things on your own without depending on anyone and I said that what we see in Jesus from today I met who have been in church when I've been in the body of Christ for five years or more who are still behaving as babes I want to be employed I want to be visited I want to be spoken to someone even when they are doing the wrong thing. Want to be pampered. And some of them are still wearing pampers in church. Spiritual pampers. They do a lot of things and they want to get away with it. And because of that, the devil is having a few day in the life of so many people. Praise the name of the Lord. And we are trying in our own way to correct that. That we don't have such persons in our congregation but that people will build up and become part of the body of Christ and do what is expected of them. Today, by the grace of God, I'm speaking to us on this topic. Very simple, but very important. Spiritual authority. Everyone says spiritual authority. Spiritual authority. After you have matured spiritually, the next level should be exercising authority as a child of God. Not to be intimidated. Not to be afraid as a child of God. Authority has to do with official permission or approval. The power to do certain things without questioning. For example, nobody will walk up to Pastor John and ask him, why are you sitting on the seat where administrator is known to be seated all the time? He's sitting there because he was authorized to do that, to hold brief for him, and to do what the man was doing, because the man traveled. But for any person in the choir or in the congregation to suddenly walk up and sit down here, how, do we, how will you react to that? Will you all be surprised? Except if it's a drama. That maybe Brother Theophilus, Brother Emmanuel, or any of the brothers come to take their seats on this side of the hall, it will be questionable. It will be questionable. So authority is actually a permission given to you, an approver, to do certain things as a child of God without questioning. Without anybody questioning you. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus said something. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over how many power? All the power of the enemy. And very interesting, he said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. No matter the trick the enemy wants to use, through air, through accident, through charm, through witchcraft or mammoth spirit, the Bible says, nothing shall by any means do what hurt you. Somebody say, I shall not be hurt. Say it again. Why? Because a power has been given to you. 
You have been authorized as a child of God. I give unto you power to trade upon. You have power and I have power to trade upon serpent and scorpion. And not only that, and over all, all, all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. Witchcraft, occultic power, ogbony power, wherever they are coming from, all the power of the enemy, you have been given power over them, to trade upon them, to mess them up, over all the power of the enemy. God has given you power over them. You know, sometimes you hear believers complaining and packing out of this house. How many of you have heard that somebody is packing out of a house because a witch is living in the house? How many of you have heard about it? Nobody? You have not heard, man? The way you know this is your hand. Uh -huh. If you have heard, and I will sure that even some Christians in here are not afraid of certain persons in the office. They say, that man is wicked. Though. That man is terrible. I don't know where the man is. They said, man belongs to one court. So because of that, you are afraid. They are giving you an assignment to stay in the same office. Because there are offices where you have one or two persons. Say you are afraid of the person. Why are you afraid? Afraid of who? Afraid of nothing. And the Bible says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. One of our sisters here, who work in one of the establishments, one of the days I didn't see her, I, my spirit just said, call her. What the service was going on. I want to have an anointing service. And I was going to call her. And she, she came. Very obedient sister. She walked into the church. I was so happy. We finished and anointed her. Before now, somebody in her office had been a traitor to her. Those people who boast about witchcraft. But do you know, as she got into the office, the charm and the power the lady had prepared to hurt her. As soon as that lady cited our sister and told the real life story, she collapsed. She wanted her sister to collapse, but she collapsed. And they picked her with an ambulance and rushed her to the hospital. And all day today, any time she sees her sister, she's always afraid. Because what she planned to do returned on her head. And I want to declare to you, every plan of the enemy through anybody shall return on the head of the person. But you must realize the power that is given to you as a child of God and over all the power, not some of the power, over all the power, over all and nothing shall by any means, they can't get you through anyway. They cannot. Well, Mark, Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, 17 and 18, the Bible says something there, they will not get to where we took a Bible reading. The Bible says, and this sign shall follow them that do what? That believe. That believe. So the question now is, are you a believer? It's not just enough coming to church, attending church, telling somebody, I'm a member of King Pilate Church. You know, there are people who have been in church for 20 years. In our full gospel book, in those days, I read of a man who preached, a preacher for almost 60 something years. But he was not born again. But goodness, he got born again somewhere along the line. So they may even be preachers. They may be people who sing in the church. They may be people who are ushers. They may be people who are members of a particular church. They are known as members of King Palace Church, members of Deep Life Church, members of Dunamis Bible Church, members of Pentecostal Church, members of the Anglican Church. They may be wearing cassock, but they are far from realities. These are not people we are talking about. The Bible says, this sign shall follow them who are members of the church. No, this sign shall follow them. This sign shall follow them who believe, that believe in my name, not in the name of their church. Not where they are coming from. In my name shall they do one cast out devil. Cast out devil. You will meet the devil. He says, Satan, you are not permitted to be in this place. Get out and the devil should go. Not that you will be children when you see the devil. You have power. God has given you power over them. Anywhere you see them. Not, I, I wonder where some people say no. You know, there's nothing like deliverance ministry. Now you say it is my ministry. To anyone who believes, you are giving power to do what? And the Bible says, Go preach the word. Heal the 
is sick. And know what? And cast out devil. These are three basic ministries that God had given to his people. Go preach the word. He is sick and cast out devil. Some people tell you, no, I'm not called to deliverance ministry. And some people will also personalize and write deliverance uh, something, something, deliverance ministry. Their only work is to cast out the devil. Some people say their only work is prophetic ministry. Some may even say deliverance and prophetic ministry. That's what they're called to do. But that's not true. The calling of every believer. The Bible says, To them that believe, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devil. They shall speak with what tongue? New tongue. How can you be in a Pentecost action? For one year, two years, people are speaking in tongue, they are not speaking. Then what are you speaking in? Are you speaking in your eyes or your nose? Bible says you are speaking in tongue. Because speaking in tongue is a mystery. It's a gift given to the people of God. Verse 18. They shall take up serpent. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And the sick shall do what? Recover. We are not telling you in our generation to go looking for serpent. Go and be digging hole. Say, where is serpent? You not pick it. No. But if, for example, you come in contact with the serpent, and you have the boldness and the power of God in you, what will happen? The serpent will disappear. A story was told of Baba Lola, the founder of CSC. The Bible said the man, the story said that the man was praying on the mountain. He was fasting and praying. And he was so tired that he laid and slept, and slept off. And a python came and crossed over him. As soon as the tail of the python finished crossing, the python dried up. He woke up and saw the python dead. That is the power that God expects us to manifest. Now when you see the sick, you lay your hand and pray. You don't even need to begin to call your pastor. It's when the matter is beyond you that you begin to call your pastor. See a sick person say, in the name of Jesus that I serve, I command you to give way. And that thing will give way. Can I hear you? Amen. Can I hear another amen? amen. Verse, I think that was done, verse 18. Now let's go to where we took our Bible reading, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18. The Bible said there, he said, let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know in having a spiritual authority and manifesting spiritual authority you, know to, you need to know your life from your right that you may know what is the whole of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the same and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what? who believe those of us who believe there is a power there is power that is given to us to manifest so according to the working of his mighty power which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead. The resurrection of the dead carries power. That when he raised him from the dead, I set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places where far and above how many of the principalities, all principalities and power and mind and dominion and every name that name not only in this world but also in that which is to come. And I put how many things under him? How many things? All things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things. Two things. He put all things under his feet and made him head over how many things? Over how many things? And who is this Jesus? What is this Jesus today? In heaven, I be. That's why we're misbehaving. Because he's in heaven. Where is he, Jesus, today? He's in us. Until you wake up with the consciousness that Jesus is in us. If you are still thinking in heaven, before he arrived, the devil will deal with you before Jesus will come down from heaven. But if you understand that he's inside of you, anywhere you go, of course, that's why men live in sin. If you live with the consciousness that Christ is inside of you, you will misbehave. You will not do things anyhow. You will know that he's with you. That's why in the book of Isaiah, he says his name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Oh, that's a good name for you. God with us. Emmanuel. 
God with us. That God is with you. Because show that God is with you. That is when you manifest the power of God. That's when you manifest the power. When you know and believe that God is with you. Hallelujah. When you know that God is with you. We need to come to time with our rights and privileges in Christ Jesus. Knowing what is given to us. These powers are given to us freely. We don't pay for them. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. First Corinthians 2 12. First Corinthians 2 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we may know the things that are freely given to us. Of who? Of God. Powers are freely given to us. And we need to manifest this power. I said we need to do what? We need to manifest this power. We need to show up this power. Excite the authority that is given to us. What do you say of a policeman or an immigration officer? If a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is traveling and an immigration officer decides at the airport that he will not travel, would the man go? No. He can go. Is it because the immigration officer is stronger and bigger than him? No, it's not because he has authority. He says, excuse me, sir. Please, uh, my, my uncle wants to check something. Let's look through your passport. He said, please, can you sit there while we check? He said, my flight is going. He said, please, just be patient. The flight we go, you will see them. Because an immigration officer had been authorized to check and to give approval. And there's no other place where you, can, you can't go to military because they have gone and they're killing everybody. Say, please, I don't want immigration passport. Give me a military passport. Is there anything like that? So you go to the army. I said, this one is somebody. I'm a chief of army staff. So I will not carry it. When you come to the airport, they will tell you, please, this kind of passport can't go. Go through the army barrack. And in army barrack, are, are, are there airport there? No. And even if you go to the country where you're going, they will be likelihood of returning you back. A policeman can stop you and park you on the road. Why? Not because he's a very big man, but because he has been authorized. He has been given authority. That uniform. That's why if you tear the uniform of a policeman is an offense on his own. True or false? If you know the power that you are carrying, you didn't just get the power yourself. God gave you this power to manifest the power. And it's given. And it is by the Spirit of God. It's by the Spirit of God. That's why, if, as a child of God, if you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and one strange spirit is messing up around you, you tell it to get out. Do you know that as a child of God, Spirit wife or spirit husband have no right to indwell inside of you. True or false? What did you do this? He said to get out of your life because this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and does not belong to it. And that spirit will pass. It may have come from your family, but recognizing, realizing your position in Christ will throw it away. And that will happen for you in the name of Jesus Christ. At the beginning of creation, God made man in his image and after his likeness, and gave man charge over the earth and the affairs of the earth. How what God did? Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. Genesis 1. Genesis 1. Are you aware that you are made in the image of God and after his likeness? And the earth. And God said, Let us make man. What? In our image. God said to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them do what? Have dominion over what? The fish of the sea and over the fowl of the earth and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. Verse 27. So God who said let us make man, made man, created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him and made, and made him male and female. There, verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Do you know that this verse 28 can keep a man on the earth? And every woman looking for the fruit of the womb, with this scripture deep inside of you, you will have your children. You know why? God said, God bless them. 
Don't, God didn't cause them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. To do what? To subdue the earth. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the earth. And over every living thing that moved upon the earth. Subdue the earth. Subdue the earth. I want to ask you. Do you see this word manifesting? Eh? Of course. Are you aware that man has subdued the earth? It, you know the greatness of the sea. But man had made the ship that moved in the ocean. Man. Because God said, subdue the earth. Let's see Psalm chapter 8 from verse 3. Psalm 8 from verse 3. Let's read it. When I consider your heavens, the work of their fingers, the moon and the stars, with their as ordained. Uh -uh. This man said, the man must have studied geography and studied the, 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 Milky, the Galaxy Milky Way. And know the size of the star. I think we are told that one star is bigger than the planet Earth. Am I correct? You know, look at how many there are. Now, one God created this earth. Created the heavens, the various planets, and the stars. The work of God, and the moon and the stars, which God has ordained. Verse 4. He said, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that you visited him. Truly God has visited me and you. I said, God has visited us. When we consider the glory, it's not like the president of Nigeria visiting your house in Kango. Do you think people, the Mengwa will come to your house? Ah, he moved, the president blows her in. And where are they going to? They're going to Barista Victor Ekashi's house, a deacon of King Palace Church. And they just blow her in, and they landed there. Many people will be thinking, who is this man? Is there any relationship? This man will be so special. In short, the news will be on. They say the president is going to Congo. To do what? Commission a project? There's no federal project there. What is he going to do? He said, no, he's going to see one of our brothers. Ah! Because it happened when Governor Mazu visited my house with all his executives. Church, when he left, Mayangwa of the area came to me. He said, I should please help him. He was in charge of the area. But the visit of the governor to my house changed everything. He said, I remember giving him some babarika, some dresses. Anything they are sharing to youth who come and ask me, please help me talk to the governor about our own area. The Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Are you aware that God is mindful of you? And the son of man that God visited him. Verse 5. For thou had made him a little lower than the Elohim and had crowned him with what? With glory and honor and power. You are full of glory. You are full of honor. Nobody should despise you. Do not allow anyone to look down on you. Yes? Verse 6. Now I made him to do what? To have dominion over the works of the hand. Now I had put how many things under his feet? All things. All things are under your feet. In, in the book of Ephesians, they are under the feet of Jesus. But here, they have entered under your feet. They are under your feet. You are in charge. God gave man control. God gave man authority over his creatures to rule and to control. Jesus at resurrection declared that all power, how many power? All power has been given to him. Matthew 28, 18, where we took a Bible reading. Matthew 28, 18, he said, he said to them, Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And where is this power today? This same power he had given to us. This same power you don't want, he had given to us. And this same Jesus is in me and is in you. So go and manifest the power wherever you go. Manifest the power anywhere you are. In your offices, in your home, your neighborhood. Manifest it. Church, I told you one time, which is a wizard, they, I came into my new house, there where I live today, and discovered that the place was turned to a witchcraft coven. And they were always, the bird was always crying. And we started praying. At the time, the voice of the bird stopped. But my neighbor said, thank God, since you came up, that before here, before I would not sleep. But do you know that he said, pastors now, both the tree 
and the bed are nowhere to be found. They are all gone. You heard our pastor talk about rat disturbing him. Uh, are they still there? You dealt with them. Anything troubling you, you have power to speak over them. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Here, this January, we don't finish. We had a co covenant of salt. Am I correct? I carried my own weight and poured at home everywhere. After pouring it, my wife, what did we see at the back? Snake. And the snake was cured. Whatever it was hiding, we do not know. Those of you who have not used your own, use it. The problem is that when you use it and God drives evil, and you don't see it physically, sometimes you don't celebrate God. You don't appreciate God. But God is working. Somebody say God is working. You have power inside of you. Say all power has been given to you. Just know that you have this power. I'm telling you what I've tried. In my village, we have chased off shrine, idolatry, we have chased out native doctors. We have opened shrine and destroyed them. We have burned the bags of native doctors. They are nothing compared to the power you have in you, except if your life is not right. But if your life is right, there's nothing you cannot do as a child of God. Don't live your life as if you are helpless or powerless. You are not helpless. I say you are not helpless. You are not powerless. You are full of power. The power is in you. The power is in your mouth. Speak out and God will honor you. John chapter 6 verse 63 and 2 Corinthians 4 7. John 6 63. Jesus said, It is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. When you speak, allow God to perform it. For God said, I watch over my word to do what? To perform it. Just speak and God will do it. Speak. Tell that man that you can't go further. What happened to Apostle Paul? Apostle Paul was preaching to a man, Sergeant Paulus, the deputy of the town, and one native doctor who felt that he had become somebody in that environment. He came with a mind of challenging Paul by discouraging that man from hearing the gospel. Paul stretched forth hand. He said, from henceforth, you will not see for a season. And the man became blind. Grow to the level of manifesting the power of God. Speak the word of God. And God will honor his word. God will honor his word. Speak. The power is in your mouth. Speak. And God will honor his word in your mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes the way we look, our position, our the, the coins in our pocket, make us think that we don't have anything. Second Corinthians 4, 7. Second Corinthians 4, 7. Second Corinthians 4, 7. Who is there? But we have this treasure in Athens vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Because we are carrying jar, we are carrying flesh. That is nothing. But you know that there is power resident in us. And it is the power of God. We can speak to trees like Jesus did. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. He can speak to the environment. He can speak to the weather. He can speak to anything. And God will honor your word. Brethren, I'd like you to go home with this consciousness that you have the power of God inside of you. I have authority and right to exercise the power because the Spirit of God is in you. I'd like you to bow your head and begin to pray. Say, God, help me. Help me and give me the grace and the boldness to manifest your power. Go ahead and pray. And God will honor his word in your mouth.